Hello and welcome to Mind Blowers, episode six. In this episode, we'll learn about some huge breakthroughs coming out of research. Well, actually, they're really, 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 really smart. Welcome to the Nano Revolution. IBM has been working on big ideas in small spaces for quite some time. In September of 89, that's 1989, IBM fellow Don Eigler became the first person in history to move and control an individual atom. About a month and a half later, over a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, Eigler and his team used a custom-built microscope to spell out the letters IBM in Xenon 35 Xenon atoms. At that time, the accomplishment seemed like something out of science fiction. But now, let's take a look at the work that's been done at IBM Research that built on his discovery. What's the smallest thing you've ever taken a picture of? An insect? Ooh. A pebble? Well, IBM researchers have taken a picture of the building blocks of the universe. An atom. Say cheese, Mr. Atom. An IBM research team from Zurich imaged the chemical structure of an individual molecule called pentacene. This is the first time anything like this has ever been done with this high resolution. How does this work? Well, let me turn this over to my new co-host, NanoKev. Hey, thanks, MegaKev. You see, a carbon monoxide molecule lies at the end of a sharp metal tip, which is then placed at the end of an atomic force microscope. The molecule acts as a high-powered magnifying glass that scientists use to image the individual atoms within the pentacene molecule. The image reveals the exact anatomy or chemical structure at the atomic resolution. That's nanotastic! Imagine a cell phone that could store a terabyte of information. That's a bajillion movies in high definition and a hyper bajillion telephone numbers. Well, IBM scientists, along with Paul Rothman of the California Institute of Technology, are working towards that goal. They have made a breakthrough discovery in how nanomaterials are built. They call it DNA origami tiny DNA circuit board. DNA nanostructures would guide the construction and assembly of various components including carbon nanotubes, nanowires, and nanoparticles at dimensions significantly smaller than ever before. We're talking about computer chips that build themselves. Imagine being able to build a skyscraper like this. Not only do you have the scaffolds which help with the placement of materials, but the skyscraper actually assembles itself. With the current way chips are made, the smaller the chip, the more expensive the equipment. This process could eventually be done with less than a million dollars worth of polymers. DNA solutions, and heating implements. In addition to making chips cheaper, smaller, and faster, they'd also be much more energy efficient. Speaking of DNA, have you ever wondered what yours says about you? Imagine if there was a way for you to read your DNA so you would know more about your medical make makeup and could design your own personalized health care. Well, IBM is working on a silicon-based transistor that could do just that. A long DNA molecule would pass through a little tiny three nanometer wide hole known as a nanopore in a silicon microchip. The nanopore will serve as an electrical sensor or a barcode like thing and read your DNA. And on top of all this, it only costs $1,000 per analysis. That's just pennies when you consider that the first sequencing of the human genome costs $3 billion. Mm hard drive ever crash? Mine has. They all eventually will, and you can thank friction for it. Friction creates heat and over time causes mechanical wear. This in turn limits the lifetime and performance of mechanical systems. It even happens in nanomechanical applications. In fact, it happens much faster in the nano world. In order to solve this issue, an IBM research team looked into nanotribology, a scientific discipline that investigates friction on a nanoscale. They added high frequency vibrations as a means to reduce friction, and it worked. The vibrations act as a sort of nano oil or nano lubricant. By getting rid of some of the friction, the nano devices will be more nano energy efficient and less nano susceptible to nano breaking. Slick, huh? Well, that's all for this episode. Remember, if you're working on something mind-blowing or know somebody who is working on a mind-blowing project, share it with us so that we can show global audience just what you're doing. And thanks a lot.